but there are some of us who have a different view of how we ought to uh, approach health care in Prince George's County. A lot of people think, especially the union, the SEIU, which happens to represent the employees at the at the Prince George's General Hospital, think that we should build a new hospital. Mm -hmm. Well, some of us think that we ought to go more to community health care, provide uh, federal qualified health clinics in the community where it's just closer to the people, it's more accessible to the people. And so we're looking at that, that, that particular idea. Right now I'm being told that the federal government is going to come out with an, an additional stimulus package. We're going to get some stimulus money, huh? There's going to oh, be an great. additional stimulus package. Fantastic. And in that package, what they're going to do is they're going to provide funding for counties and cities to open up additional federally qualified health centers. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to, we in Prince George's County need to position ourselves so that we can take advantage of those funds and move toward that goal of federally qualified health centers. The funding comes from the federal government. And instead of building, I do think we do need a new facility, mm -hmm. but I don't think we need such a large facility as we have now in place, and that would bring get, bring us a more full of a healthcare if we get rid of that monster that we got over mm -hmm. there and build something smaller mm -hmm. where we can just take care of the needs and also uh, emphasize preventive health measures. Mm -hmm. Okay, then that's great. Okay, what about the uh, uh, what was it, Jericho residents? Yes, Jericho tell, residences. Tell us something about that. Well. If you know, in in the, in the 24th district, uh, we have a, 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 a Jericho Baptist Church, right? And it is named Jericho City of Praise. Well, in addition to the nonprofit profit entities that they operate, they also operate a prof, for profit entity. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this past spring, they dedicated a senior, senior. living facility that's called. Jericho residences. Mm -hmm. Well, as in any. So you had to be 75 to get in there? I don't <laughs> think you had to be quite 75. <laughs> but you, you do have to be a senior citizen right. in order to be in there. Uh -huh. And I think that starts from 55 on 55 up. 55 on up. up. Okay. Yes. Well, they were having an issue whereby they were trying to get their permits to build. Mm -hmm. And they ran into some issues with the with the state in terms of wetlands. Oh, yes. <laughs> and they were, weren't seemed to have been making any headway and they needed someone to assist them in doing that. They had to get their permits because they need to start on time because the funding, the way it was connected and the different fun, funding mm -hmm. mechanism that they had, that means they had to do that by a certain time. If they didn't do that, they would lose the funding. Mm -hmm. So I got a call to insist them in that mm -hmm. with with the state, and I was able to successfully negotiate the and, waters. And what, that facility, how many uh, does it hold? It, it, hold, it holds, I'm not sure the quite number, but I know it's more than 300 residents. That 300? They can, yes, right. uh, 375 residents. No, no they can, kidding. They can house in that facility. Fantastic. So, Looking out for the senior citizens. Absolutely. <laughs> I tell you. I'm about one myself. <laughs> right, that's what now. I always tell them. I go to the store, they say, I say, where's the senior citizen this year, uh, discount? You know, they look at me and they say, what? And I said, yeah, it wasn't for the senior citizen, you wouldn't be here. I said, they, they made everything you got. You know well, that, 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 so you that to, is correct. So you have to look out for them. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to, now everybody talks about, anywhere you go, unemployment. Now, yes. what, what's yeah. going on? Well, as you know, uh, unemployment has gone beyond 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, and in it, the federal government has tried to, I think the House and the Senate just passed a uh, a bill to extend benefits, so mm -hmm. they have extended weeks of benefit. But one of the things with that, uh, we in the state, there is going to be an additional $126 million allocated to, to the states mm -hmm. for, uh, for unemployment insurance benefits. However, in order to receive those benefits, there are going to be several things you, you would have to do. I serve on the Oversight Committee for Unemployment Insurance in the state. And what's your phone number? 
my phone number is 301-772-2801. Hey, everybody wants to call you. So in order to receive those extended benefits, the state is going to have to do three things. Mm -hmm. First of all, they're going to have to pass an alternative base period because unemployment okay. is based on, it is allocated mm -hmm. and calculated on a base period when you are working. And so in order... And in order just to have one, you have to have an alternative one. So if you don't qualify in one base period, you can qualify in another. So number one, we have to pay some alternative, pass an alternative base period. Mm. How, how does that look uh, as well, far as being passed? You think, think you can it, get it through I think the it, Senate? I think it will be passed when, mm -hmm. we, when we go back in session in January. In I January. Think, okay. I think the General Assembly is, to, is supposed mm -hmm. to pass it. We met last month, the uh, Oversight Committee met, and there seemed to have been sentiment among the members to pass this legislation. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we passed last session a bill to give part-time workers unemployment benefits. Great. So, because nowhere, if you were part time, you didn't qualify. You didn't qualify. That That's right knocks you state. out no matter what. That's right. But it's now the state is working to. Well, we already passed one bill, but there are some modifications to that bill that we must make mm -hmm. in this coming session in order to qualify for the additional benefits. And the third thing we have to do in order to qualify for the additional benefits, we have to provide more training. In other words, we take some of the benefits and give to those who are going to training so they can be retooled for the jobs, the green jobs, the technology right. jobs. Right. And so after we do those three things, we would hope to receive those additional benefits so they can go to the trust fund. Okay, tell us something about utilities, especially uh, the electric, you know. Well, well, what are you doing along those lines? Well, you know, uh, Back in 1999, when I first went to the Senate and was assigned to the Finance Committee, the Finance Committee deals with utilities. That's one of our responsibilities. And one of the things we did that year was we passed a restructuring of electric rates, of electric rates in the state of Maryland. Now, I did not vote for the particular legislation at that time because I felt there was no reason to change. And lo and behold, my intuition weighed out. Mm -hmm. The measure was to bring competition to Maryland. Oh. That that would be competition and obviously... That'd make the rates go down. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. When you have more competition, mm -hmm. the rates will go down. That's right. the theory right. behind competition. However, when, when the measure was passed, I felt that there weren't going to be competition. Mm -hmm. There was too many inhibitors in the legislation so we wouldn't have competition. First of all, we froze the rates and said that competition wouldn't come until five years after that. Mm -hmm. That was because Governor Glenn Denon said, we got to see what this is. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it and give it a chance mm -hmm. and until five years. So it was five years before it kicked in. Once the five years was up, competition never came. Mm -hmm. So that means we had a steady increase of rates. Certainly. And the governor, when he won... Four years ago, the governor said he wanted to do something about those high-sparing electrical rates. Mm. So now the governor has come up with a proposal that he want to take us back to mm -hmm. not deregulations, mm. but regulations. Regulation. <laughs> and he felt that that was the way we could somehow get a hold of these firing mm -hmm. utility rates was to go back to regulation. So he, is, he proposed mm -hmm. last session that we do that. However, the, pad, the bill passed the Senate, but it did not pass the House. So we will be looking at that this year, going back to re-regulation, so we can get some handle on trying to decrease these rates. Well, what about minority participation as far as taxes is concerned? Well, as you know, a lot of projects are built in the, in the county and in the yeah. state. I, I get a lot of... Uh, uh, calls on uh, National Harbor. <laughs> well, that's one of them. That's one of them. Uh, but, and it's, as you know, over a period of time, they are continuing to construct mm -hmm. and build down there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that happens is that a lot of these projects get taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. Sure. And Certainly. they get taxpayers' money, and they don't want, do not want to, minorities to participate in the development 
of these projects so they would have jobs and be able to to advance and get training from these projects. So what I have feel that when we get these tips, these people mm -hmm. get these tips and these yeah. incentives that they should be mandated that they have minority participation. 